attention when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is dedicated to empowering our communities by providing progressive talk radio for our audience. We strive to be an intersectional voice for the voiceless. As a black-owned and operated station, we are committed to highlighting diverse perspectives and creating safe spaces for meaningful dialogue. We believe that everyone has something unique to bring to these political, economic, social, and cultural conversations. And we don't shy away from the hard conversations about current events. We endeavor to be a beacon of hope and understanding while boldly challenging listeners to think more deeply about difficult topics that impact us all. With this in mind, our mission statement at KBLA Talk 1580 is simple, to create an inclusive platform that promotes civil discourse through honest dialogue and encourages personal growth among our listeners so they can become the active agents of change. Our vision is to establish ourselves as the premier radio network with relevant programming across the beloved community. Connecting people through shared experiences and collective power for lasting impact beyond these challenging times. Live from the Merck Park, USA, I'm Tavis Smiley, and you're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. So glad to see you and me uh, back in stride again. Our phone number, 1-800-920-1580, 1-800-920-1580. All of our socials can be found at KBLA 1580. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, everything at KBLA 1580. Uh, let me also invite you right now to download our app at KBLA 1580, download the app and listen to us live anywhere in the world in real time. You just heard three hours of Dominique de Prima live from South Africa. They are listening to us right now in South Africa on the KBLA app, anywhere you are in the world. I mean it. You can listen to us in real time, but only if you download the app right now at KBLA 1580. Should you miss us any day in real time, check out the podcast of our program by going to the app, the website, Anchor, Spotify, Apple, so many places to get the podcast and listen at your leisure should you miss us any day in real time. But I am delighted to have you along live with us today for the next three hours. You can also watch the live stream of this program right now by tapping on the KBLA TV icon on our app or by going to our YouTube channel. And let me also invite you to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the real Tavis Smiley and get Twitter updates at Tavis Smiley. A good show, no, a great show on tap for you today in our second hour. <laughs> We prepare to close out another Black Music Month, a conversation in Hour 2 with Dr. Lewis Gordon about the profound legacy and impact of the blues on African-American culture and beyond. I look forward to that conversation in our second hour with Dr. Lewis Gordon as we unpack 
the impact of the blues on American culture, and for that matter, culture around the world. In our third hour, two conversations. Up first, we'll speak with Phil Allen Jr. about the camera, the transformative power of film and footage towards documenting and dismantling oppressive systems. And on the B side of our three, On the B side of our three, it's a conversation with Morris Day about the upcoming Morris Day and the Time exclusive experience in Las Vegas and rumors, rumors that Morris is set to retire after he wraps this year's two tour, that is. Morris Day on the back side of our three. I promised you not a good but a great show today. But in this first hour, speaking of a great show, he's back. And he has a new podcast. It's called Contempt of Court with Ellie Mistal. I am pleased to welcome one of my favorite guests on this program, best-selling author and the nation's justice correspondent, Ellie Mistal. Ellie, it's been too long, my friend. How are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me during this uh, Supreme Court Decides What World We Live In month. <laughs> Always fun for me. <laughs> no, it, it is true that June is Black Music Month, and it is, as you said, uh, Supreme Court Decides What World We Live In month. I'm delighted to hear your voice once again. Uh, delighted to have you back on this program. Um, first of all, let me start by asking about the podcast. I was so excited to, to, to learn about it, and, and I checked out the, uh, the premiere episode. So tell me about Contempt of Court with Ellie Mistal. Yeah, so a lot of people are suddenly interested in court reform. Somehow between the court's kind of extremist decisions regarding reproductive rights, the corruption that we see with Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito and their trips, people are so suddenly interested in how we can reform the court, but not a lot of people understand what plans are out there, what you know, strategies we have, how close we are to actual success in, re in having some of these reforms come through. So the podcast is a limited series. Each episode I go through one particular kind of court reform. So, you know, court expansion, what does that mean? Term limits, how does that work? And I explain kind of the, the theory behind it, like how it's supposed to work. And then I also try to get into the politics of how close we are to, to having it uh, happen. So I've had some great guests so far. I've got, you know, Congressman uh, Hank Johnson from Georgia is coming on to talk. Uh, he's the guy with the big ethics reform bill mm -hmm. in Congress. Um, so we're kind of talking with uh, scholars and politicians, uh, just trying to explain to people what we can do about these nine unelected law wizards people <laughs> there's nobody that covers the supreme court better than ellie mistal he happens to be a brother which uh which makes it all the better for me uh his best-selling book as you know is allow me to retort a black guy's guide to the constitution and now on top of a new york times best-selling text he has this limited uh series podcast series uh contempt of court with ellie mistal you should check it out why is ellie on today you heard him say earlier june is uh the supreme court decides what world we live in month there are some blockbuster supreme court decisions to come perhaps as early as today on student loans of course we've been talking uh, ad infinitum ad nauseum about the affirmative action ruling that we expect to drop you heard ellie already tee up the fact that the court uh, has uh, put his head in the sand, quite frankly, when it comes to uh, these ethics violations and, and not just um, uh, ethics violations, but 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 to my mind, uh, legalized corruption and normalized bribery. That's how I would put it when it comes to mm -hmm. Paul Singer and uh, Harlan Crow. We'll get into that in this hour, but we have to start today. As a matter of fact, let me let me do this first when we come forward. Uh, we will start with this. If you did not hear our show yesterday and if you've uh, not been listening to the news or watching the news, uh, then you probably haven't heard uh, the tape. But uh, when I say the tape, you know what I'm talking about, the Donald <laughs> Trump tape. So when we come forward, if you haven't heard it, I'm going to play for you as we did yesterday, the two-minute uh, Donald Trump tape. Uh, and we're going to get Ellie's take on that, uh, Donald Trump's legal uh, issues, Supreme Court issues, and, and, and some more, perhaps. It's going to be a great hour and a great three-hour program today. But we start with Ellie Mistal, June, of course, Black Music Month. And because we're going to be talking about the blues in the next hour, here's some more B.B. King for you. And uh, throughout these three hours, we'll play some blues and play some Morris Day. It's going to be a great show. Tavis Smiley on KBLA Talk 1580.
talk about. Good thing we've got three hours. More of Tavis Smiley when we come forward. <laughs> The pandemic may be over, but many Angelinos could be at risk of losing the place they call home. It's important to know your rights as a residential renter in the city of LA. Did you know eviction protection still exists for unpaid COVID-19 rental debt that was due before March 31st, 2023? And that you have five days to respond to an eviction notice, also known as an unlawful detainer. Learn more about your rental rights at housing.lacity.org. Be informed, be protected, be at home. Buying your dream home can be exciting, but it might take some sacrifice. But don't worry, Rocket is here to give you a hand. If you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you could get up to $10,000 cash toward closing from Rocket Mortgage. That's a big deal. Why not see how Rocket can help you start your legacy? You got this, and Rocket's got you. Only with Rocket. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started. For purchase transactions, only must like rate between 331 and 31. Call 837 Rocket for conditions and restrictions. Call Housing Rental License Office to take MLS Consumer Access. Number 3030. Sometimes we lose. Sometimes we win, sometimes we try to fit it all in Sometimes we don't know what's in store Sometimes we find what we're looking for Sometimes we're rolling easy and free Sometimes one and one makes three So much to love along this ride That's why Nationwide is on your side Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for education as a right, not a privilege. Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science is a private, nonprofit, community founded, student centered university committed to cultivating diverse health profession leaders who are dedicated to social justice and health equity for underserved populations. CDU does this through outstanding education, clinical service, and community engagement. Recently, Charles Drew University made history by opening only the fifth medical school at an historically black university. Congratulations, South LA. And congratulations to the dean of the medical school, Dr. Deborah Protho Stiff. CDU is now training doctors and providing $90 million in annual economic benefit to Watts and surrounding neighborhoods. To apply for medical school, get more information, or sign your child up for the Junior Doctors Saturday School Program, visit cdrewu.edu. That's cdrewu.edu. At KBLA, we are dedicated to equity in education and ending health care apartheid. And we don't black down. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is killing people. It's a powerful opioid, often made illegally and commonly mixed with illicit drugs. It can even be pressed into counterfeit pills that resemble prescription medications. Just two milligrams, about the size of a few grains of sand, can potentially be lethal. This isn't an ad to scare you, but it is an ad to make you think twice. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council. Conversations that matter. matter. You're listening to Tavis Smiley on KBLA Talk conversation with Morris Day later in today's program. June is Black Music Month and uh, no more propitious time than June to check in with our friend Morris Day who has a very special experience with the time of course coming up in Las Vegas and uh, there are rumors that Morris is set to retire. So we'll put a lot to Morris Day uh, later in today's program. Uh, but in this first hour we're pleased to welcome back our dear friend and brother Elliot Mastall, New York Times bestselling author of Allow Me to Retort. A Black Guy's Guide to the Constitution, and now with a brand new limited series podcast called Contempt of Court with Ellie Mustall. As I said earlier, nobody covers the Supreme Court and legal issues better than Ellie, and I'm delighted to have him on for 
this hour. Okay, the tape. Uh, we played this yesterday uh, for those who were tuned in. Hope that was you, 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 and you. Uh, but if you missed it here, I'm sure you caught it somewhere. But just in case you didn't, uh, one more again, we will play uh, the uh, the tape of uh, Mr. Trump and uh, get Ellie to dissect it. Uh, I, I've heard this thing now a dozen times. Every time I hear it, I hear something different. So I invite you to turn your radios up, whatever you're listening on the app, YouTube, watching us, whatever, and listen. You may have heard it, but listen to every single word that he says. And we're going to break this thing down in just a moment. Here is uh, Donald Trump on the tape. These are bad, sick people. That, but, was, that was your coup, you know, the, against you. That's well, it they, started right at the Like beginning. when Millie's talking about, oh, you were going to try to do a coup. No, they, they were trying right. to do that before you even were sworn in. That's right. Trying to overthrow yeah. your election. Well, with Millie, uh, let me see that. I'll, I'll show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack Iran. Isn't it amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look. This was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. Mm. All sorts of stuff. It's pages long. Look. Mm. Wait a minute. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. Yeah. But look, look at this. You attack and... Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. <laughs> she'd send it, no, she'd send it to yeah. Anthony Weiner. Yeah, yeah. The pervert. Um, by the way, isn't that incredible? Though? Yeah. I was just saying, because we were talking about it. And, you know, he said... He wanted to attack Iran and what? Yeah, These are the papers. Did. Pretty, oh, this was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to Declassify. figure out a, a yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified yeah. it. Now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. I mean, it's so, I'm look, we here and I have a, and you probably almost didn't believe me, but now you believe me. No, it's, I believe it's you. It's incredible, right? No, they, hey, bring they some, uh, bring some cokes in, please. I love that ending, Ellie. Uh, bring some cokes in, please. Uh, we need some more cokes in here. Um, I've heard it, as I said, a number of times. And Miles, my board op, who you spoke to on the phone moments ago, just said to me, he said, he said, Tavis, I, I, I can't believe. And Miles is an audio guy. So I can't believe the quality of that audio. He's that microphone. That microphone had to be on Trump's lapel. I mean, the audio, like, typically, I mean, think about, I'm talking to our audience here now, of course, think about the audio tape we heard of the, of the, of the four Latinos, the three council members and Ron Herrera. You had, uh -huh. to, you had to listen to that audio tape, which is typically uh, the way uh, it, it works. You have to listen to hear. This thing is clear as a bell. That's just Miles' assessment of how good the audio is. That said, Ellie Mistal, I'm passing the mic to you. I'm shutting up. Talk to me about what you heard on this tape and what it means. I mean, what I heard was Trump ruin his own legal defense out of his own fat mouth while he was trying to get some Cokes and cheeseburgers, <laughs> right? Like the, the entire defense... I mean, like, I'm being serious. The entire defense, just legally, just for a second, the entire defense Trump has to these charges that he stole documents and committed espionage is that he didn't know the documents were classified. He didn't know that they were important. He thought he had every right to have them. That is what we call in the law intent. He had no intent to show classified, to, to have or to disseminate classified documents. On that tape, Trump clearly says a few things. A, this is off the record. B, I'm not supposed to be showing this to you. C, the military made this to me and give, gave this to me. D, if I was president, I could declassify him, but now we've got a problem. That's his whole defense <laughs> ruined out his own fat mouth. And it's just, you know, it, it's amazing to me that there are still Republicans that defend him because this is indefensible, right? What we should, what Republic, if I was, you know, a Republican strategist, which I will note, I am not, <laughs> but it, I would, I would have already moved from defending what he did to trying to mitigate how much time he's supposed to spend in jail, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I would already be on like, look, of course he did it. Of course he's very bad. 
but, you know, we don't throw people in jail all the time. And of course, we do throw people in jail for this all the time. <laughs> but, like, that's the, that's the argument that I would be flipping to, right, to mitigate the harm. Because the idea that he's innocent is blown away in this actual tape. I mean, again, Tavis, the thing that, you, that, that I hear clear as day, the military made this and gave it to me. That is clear knowledge that these are these are war plans, that these are secretive war plans that he's not allowed to show whoever's bringing the coke. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, think. I mean, just think about it this way: if just because you end it with the coke, and I do think that it's that it's funny. <laughs> it is. Think, <laughs> think about sitting in the Situation Room and you want a coke, right? The person who brings you the coke has to have security clearance, mm-hmm. right? You can't door dash the coke. You have to literally have somebody who has been vetted by the FBI to bring you that coke if you are viewing classified documents in the situation room. He's at you know he's at his he's at his crib asking his you know boy probably Walt Nala right asking his boy um, to bring him a freaking sandwich like it's 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 absolutely ridiculous and the. Walls, I do think, are closing in on him. Um, I think Jack Smith, I, I, I've said in other places, I think I was wrong about Jack Smith. I feared that Jack Smith would be another Bob Mueller type, mm-hmm. you know, another like, we're going to do it by the book and move very slow and nothing's ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think that is not true. I think Jack Smith is potentially the prosecutor we've been waiting for. I have a whole other thing about how Garland still slow walked the thing, and that was been in, in the New York Times and whatever. But Jack Smith seems like a straight shooter, and he also seems incredibly prepared, mm-hmm. right? So to even have this tape as part of your indictment, something that I've said uh, elsewhere, Tavis, is that understand lawyers, for the most part, do not put their best evidence in the indictment. Mm-hmm. They put only – the, the kind of bare minimum that they have to to make sure that they get the indictment in the first place, right? Right, right, right. They want to save that best evidence to, like, well, bam, at the trial stage, mm-hmm. right? Jack Smith, this might not even be the best thing he's got. Wow. <laughs> I yeah. mean, this, this tape might not even be the best thing that Jack Smith has on this man in the espionage case, to say nothing of the investigation that's ongoing into his coup attempt. So. Yeah. All of that said, everything I just said assumes that we are living on Earth One, where the no more normal laws of Newtonian and Einsteinian physics apply. <laughs> <laughs> everything we've seen from Donald Trump tells us that we are not living on such a world, that, that Trump is immune to the normal laws of crime and accountability. And, you know, and as you look at the, at the things that are in his favor in this case, none of it is on the law. Everything is in – all the things in his favor are in the politics, right? So, He's got to pick his own judge, yeah. right? Eileen Cannon, that's, that helps him straight up. He's going to get to pick a jury of, like, Florida man, which certainly is going to help him. I think Jack Smith made the right choice to charge him in Florida, not D.C., because – I, I think that was the right choice kind of legally, mm-hmm. but that means we're getting a Florida jury, and mm-hmm. you know how they can go, right? Yep. Um, we, are, we are getting close to the election, and one of the things that I keep saying is that if you don't try him and convict him before the Republican National Convention, which, Tavis, as we sit here, is a year and two weeks away. It goes off January 13th uh, – sorry, July 13th, mm-hmm. 2024 – in Milwaukee. Yep. If you do not get him in jail before the Republican National Convention when he is crowned the Republican nominee for president, I don't see how you do it between the Republican National Convention and the uh, general election. I just don't think the courts will let you prosecute the major, a major party nominee. Yeah. 
no, in, I, you know, a, a month before the election. I just don't think that could, that's going to happen. Nope. So the timeline here is real, real tight. Yep. We agree in that regard. Um, speaking of timelines tight, I got about two minutes before news, traffic, and sports will continue when we come forward, of course. But let me just let me just start uh, two or three uh, questions in my line of playing devil's advocate, if you will. Number one, uh, as Miles said earlier, this tape was recorded by somebody, recorded awfully on, on some awfully good equipment. I'm going to let you just marinate on that for a second. Um, somebody recorded this. Uh, somebody taped him. Uh, and then somebody leaked that tape. CNN got it from somewhere. You see where I'm going, Elliot Mistal. Donald Trump has already started. Uh, and if I were him, I'd do the same thing in this situation. That they're after me. Somebody recorded me. Somebody leaked the tape. They're coming after me. And you just divert the eyes and the attention of your followers to the fact that the deep state is coming after you. And with his audience, that dog will hunt, as I said yesterday. Absolutely, but who cares? Like <laughs> his audience his, cares. <laughs> his supporters are always going to believe him. His yeah. supporters are, to, are his supporters are gone. They're not coming back. We can't reason with that. Did somebody record him? Absolutely. Probably his lawyer, who was like the only smart lawyer he ever hired, because his lawyer knew that knew that he needed to protect himself because <laughs> he wasn't about to go out like Michael Cohen. Right. Mm -hmm. That's probably where the tape comes from. Are people going after him? Absolutely, because he stole stuff. <laughs> that's what you do when you, when, you have, when you steal national secrets. People, the deep state, whatever, comes after you. So I don't think that those – again, those arguments are not legal arguments. Those are just political arguments, and, they're, and Tavis, to make your point, they're political arguments made to rally up his base and incite them potentially to violence mm -hmm. should the legal process play out as it normally should. Yep. When we come forward, um, speaking of the, the legal process playing out as it normally should, um, I heard Ellie sort of tee this up. Uh, we were discussing this again yesterday when the tape first came out, but I have not had Ellie Mustall's opinion on this. And ultimately, the question for me uh, that I want to pose to Ellie when we come forward after news traffic and sports is whether or not he will ever serve time. Can Ellie Mustall imagine a world, speaking of Earth and Earth 1 and Earth 2 and Earth 3, can he imagine a world where Donald Trump is ever behind bars? And that's just Trump. We ain't got to the Supreme Court stuff yet. We'll do that and a great deal more when we come forward with Ellie Mustall on KBLA Talk 1580. Be sure to like and follow Tavis Smiley at The Real Tavis Smiley. And get Twitter updates at Tavis Smiley. The conversation continues when we come forward. Forward. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The state's top law enforcement official is urging Californians to recommit themselves in the fight against hate. State Attorney General Rob Bonta says California is unfortunately not immune to hate. Overall hate crimes events increased 20.2%, jumping from 1,763 events to 2,120. Reported hate crimes targeting black people remains the most prevalent. From smoke to excessive heat, a large swath of the country is facing dangerous conditions today. Chicago and Detroit have the worst air quality in the nation Tuesday thanks to smoke from Canadian wildfires. The smoke is expected to move east, creating unhealthy conditions in parts of western and central New York. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Accident in Anaheim blocked up two middle lanes, 91 East up past Brooker Street. You can hit the brakes back at Knott Avenue. In our lead, I got a crash report at 5 South and for Osborne Street. Looks like they made it to the right-hand shoulder, but still slow from the 118 freeway. And in the slow pass, had a vehicle conk out on the 405 Southbound before Mulholla Drive. Middle lane was taken away there. They might have got to move to the shoulder, but traffic really jams up back at Sherman Way. In industry, watch for a slow block on the middle lane, 60 Westman at Crossroads Parkway. They're trying to get that move to the shoulder. Looking for a late night spot to get the crew together? Three words, Buffalo Wild Wings. They've got drinks and apps starting at $4. From 10 p.m. to close, B-dubs, where late night food and drinks start at $4. Cheers to that. Limited time at participating locations. Offers days and times may vary. Drink responsibly. Void or prohibited. Tax and fees extra. Is this, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers introduced the two players they selected in last week's NBA draft. First round pick Jalen Hood-Shafino of Indiana and second round pick Maxwell Lewis of Pepperdine. 
Both players talked about the influence Kobe Bryant had on them when they were kids. Lewis's father, Robert, grew up in Inglewood. He put up a Kobe poster in his son's bedroom. Hood Shafino has a tattoo of Kobe on his arm. Lewis and Hood Shafino will be involved in summer league play with the Lakers undrafted rookies and free agents. The Lakers are competing in the California Classic, which begins July 3rd in Sacramento. They head to Las Vegas July 7th for the 10-day NBA Summer Pro League. The Lakers have a decision to make today on Malik Beasley and Mo Bamba. Both have nine guaranteed contracts. If the Lakers don't re-sign them today, they'll be free to move on. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. If you're a business owner or lead a nonprofit that's between 26 and 49 employees, please listen. Lendistry is proud to announce a new program whereby small businesses and nonprofits may qualify for reimbursement of COVID sick leave expenses incurred in 2021 or 2022. This program is administered by the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. Eligibility criteria apply and funding is limited. For more information, visit COVID. COVIDPaidSick.com. If you're a business owner or lead a nonprofit that has between 26 and 49 employees, please listen. Lendistry is proud to announce a new program whereby small businesses and nonprofits may qualify for reimbursement of COVID sick leave expenses incurred in 2021 or 2022. This program is administered by the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. For more information, visit COVIDPaidSick.com. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm Reverend Gerald, the Life Coach. Is someone you love struggling with addiction and mental illness? Is improving your family's health important? Want to leave a legacy that your family can grow? Are you ready to enhance your perception of life experiences? Then wake up weekends at 7 a.m. with Urban Family Focus and get the wisdom, opportunity, resources, and motivation to live your best life. Join the conversation on Urban Family Focus Saturday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA. Talk 1580. We've got your black. Have you faced discrimination in Los Angeles? The City of LA Civil Rights Department can help. They investigate private sector discrimination in LA City in commerce, education, employment, and housing. If you're facing discrimination, submit a complaint online for free at laisforeveryone.com. That's laisforeveryone.com. Or call 213-978-1845. Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is killing people. It's a powerful opioid, often made illegally and commonly mixed with illicit drugs. It can even be pressed into counterfeit pills that resemble prescription medications. Just two milligrams, about the size of a few grains of sand, could potentially be lethal. This isn't an ad to scare you, but it is an ad to make you think twice. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council. Find a righteous range and don't be afraid to say what you see. We're KBLA Talk Our second hour today, we're going to be talking about the impact of the blues in this country and around the world as we uh, come to the end of June as Black Music Month. As you know, every day this month, all three hours of our program, we've been uh, choosing an iconic artist and playing the best of his or her musical corpus. 
Uh, and so today we're playing some B.B. King as we'll talk about the blues again in hour two and also playing some Morris Day in the Time because Morris Day joins us today in our third hour. Um, so a great show uh, on tap for you all three hours today. We couldn't have started any better uh, than we had with Ellie Mistall, the New York Times bestselling author of Allow Me to Retort, A Black Guy's Guide to the Constitution. As I always say, one of my favorite books of the last couple of years. And now he has a limited podcast series which you should check out. It's called Contempt of Court with Ellie Mistall. And I can assure you, you'll be empowered uh, by uh, his brilliant work in this limited podcast series. But I'm glad to have him on. Uh, he is, of course, also the justice correspondent for The Nation magazine. Uh, so, Ellie, let me jump right to that and then we'll move to the Supreme Court. So with all that you have seen, uh, with all that we have not seen, which is uh, to say that there's a lot more to come. Uh, we haven't seen the Alvin Bragg thing roll out completely. We haven't seen what Letitia James is going to do in New York. We haven't seen what Fannie Willis will do in uh, Fulton County. Uh, we haven't seen as yet what uh, the Department of Justice will do on the January 6th stuff and Trump's involvement in that. This is just one piece of this. And to your brilliant point, this may not even be the tape that is, may not be the best stuff that Jack Smith has. With all of that, can you imagine Donald Trump ever in an orange jumpsuit behind bars? I mean, I can imagine it, Tavis. I have it pretty active. <laughs> All right. I asked the wrong question. I asked the wrong question. <laughs> but, but, yeah, uh, could it happen? I do think that it could happen. I just don't think that it can happen before the next election. Mm -hmm. And this really goes to my, my criticism to Merrick Garland and his slow walking of the investigation up till this point. The timeline just doesn't work out for me. It's very hard to bring this kind of case to trial in the first place. We're dealing with a former president that's unprecedented. It's hard to see how this trial gets going in under a year. As I explained in the last segment, it's really hard to see how you, you try the Republican nominee for president in the two, three months before the general election in 2024. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it happening before the election. But if he loses that election, right? If he if we defeat him again in 2024, I do think there's a great chance that unlike last time, this time there will be handcuffs waiting for him on the backside of that loss. I think it could happen that way. I know I've heard the like, oh, well, what do you do about the Secret Service? Man, I don't know. You get them a cell right next to him. It's not <laughs> like, uh, put it like this, it's, it's not like we, we're going to send Trump to Alcatraz, all right? Mm -hmm. He's not going to have to like go to prison and join a gang to, for protection. That's not the kind of prison we send 75-year-old rich white men to. We just don't. I mean, we can debate whether or not we should, but we don't, right? He's going to go – the prison for Donald Trump is going to be a club fed, right? It's going to be a minimum security, blah, 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 blah kind of thing if we ever do convict him of a serious crime. So I don't think that the protection issues are as important as other people have said. I think too many people are watching Oz and yeah. <laughs> right, and getting the wrong idea about what's in store. But again, the, the, the fulcrum point, the crucible point, is him losing that election again. And just for, just for people who are interested in like history, this has happened before. It, is, it has happened before. It happened a lot in Rome, where to get uh, to hold political leaders accountable, you had to defeat their attempts at office first, right? This is basically Julius Caesar writ large, right? Mm. Like the reason why Julius Caesar appointed himself dictator for life is that he was getting sued for, mm. <laughs> for, for bad checks. <laughs> Right, and he knew that like he was going to have to face the pokey if he didn't if he didn't wasn't able to be you know leader of Rome. This is yeah. not dissimilar from that. So again, if we can defeat him again in 2024, I think there's a good chance of him going to jail. The problem is we never should have had to go through another election with yeah. him again. Right, yeah. like we if if the timeline had been accelerated, if people had if people at the Justice Department had understood their you know understood the assignment then this, the trial should have been happening right now so that you could have a chance to jail him and prevent him from running from office again. That would have been the better course of action. So we're already in the kind of remedial catch-up course yeah. to try to get him in jail. 
Could it happen? Yes. Is it likely to happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm right? still, I'm still, I'm still laughing at Julius Caesar and the Pokey. Sounds like a <laughs> a great short story or or a great name for a rock band, Julius Caesar and the Pokey or something. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's why that's why Ellie Mistal is the best covering the court. Only Ellie Mistal can put it in 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 terms so big and so broad and so historic that we end up talking about Julius Caesar. Uh, but I digress. Let me. I can talk about Trump. You you and I can discuss this for the next. 20 20 minutes until the top of the hour when I lose you. Let me pivot now uh, because, again, uh, the Supreme Court is is on my mind uh, and certainly on yours. Before I get into some of these blockbuster cases, and again, we're waiting, um, not with bated breath, but waiting nonetheless on this affirmative action uh, decision to drop. And it's just fascinating for me that they, they, they save this to the end to drop, even though we know, or at least think we know what they're going to say, but they've waited all the way to the end of the of these cases uh, being announced, uh, these decisions being announced uh, to give us the affirmative action case, which, again, we're still waiting on. That said, I've discussed this with others, but not with you, and I, I don't need to tee it up much uh, much for you, Ellie. Um, your thoughts on Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, the gifts, the trips, they're digging in their heels. Nothing's being done about it. John Roberts gave his middle finger to the Senate. I'm not coming to testify. We can handle this. But everybody can see what's happening, uh, that the court is being bought and bossed by big money and big business. And I'll shut up your take on that first. Okay. Well, actually, I want to start with the affirmative action thing, because I do think I can answer your question a little bit about why this case okay. is late, sure. why it's being held to the end. I think what happened is that Roberts took the case for himself. So Roberts wants to be the one to overturn affirmative action, which is going to piss off Uncle Clarence, because Uncle Clarence's whole life has been kind of pointed towards being the black guy to ban affirmative action. So I think that switch in who's writing it perhaps is delaying the case. Roberts is writing it, and that means that Clarence Thomas is going to go off in some kind of concurrence, and that might be delaying the case from com- coming. Mm. So that's why I think it's late. Okay, okay. Uh, um, I think Roberts took it away from Thomas, um, and, and that might be an interesting – you know, I still think we're going to lose, yeah. but it might be kind of a, an interesting result there. Um, But that kind of also rolls into your actual question, which is about the rampant corruption exposed by Clarence, exposed by ProPublica um, in terms of Clarence Thomas and exposed by ProPublica in terms of Samuel Alito. Mm -hmm. And what that is, Tavis, is corruption straight up. The issue is not that they took these trips. They shouldn't have been taking these trips, but the issue is not that they took these trips. The issue is that they didn't disclose the trips they were taking. And, the, and, and people should be thinking, why? Why didn't they disclose? If it's not illegal to take the trips, which it's not, then why wouldn't you disclose it unless you didn't want people to know who was buying you? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the ethical thrust here. Of course you don't want to tell the people that you're taking super yacht trips with a Nazi memorabilia collector. Of course you don't want to tell people that you're taking trips with a billionaire to go fishing, that billionaire who happens to have active litigation in front of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Of course you don't want to tell people that because people might get the wrong idea or the exact right idea, (laughs) right? And so that's the ethical problem. The fix is court reform. The fix is what I'm talking about on my podcast, the fix is the bill that uh, uh, Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson has to impose ethics reform on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the only court in America that operates without a statutory ethical code. The only one. You go to traffic court in Peoria, or you know, we're, you go to traffic court in Sacramento, there's an ethics code that the traffic court judges have to follow. That's not true for the Supreme Court justices. And what needs to happen is that Congress needs to pass legislation imposing an ethical code on the Supreme Court and imposing punishments on the Supreme Court when they violate that ethical code. Because this idea that that the Supreme Court can police itself, ProPublica has taken that idea and ground it into the dust. That is no longer a valid argument, right? So that's how we fix it. Whether or not Congress, and in this case, it's not just Republicans, whether or not uh, 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 Democrats in the Senate have the will to impose ethics reform on the Supreme Court, that unfortunately, the answer to that question is unfortunately still no. Speaking of questions, I've got more questions for Ellie Mustall when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. 
Say the quiet part out loud. loud. KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> Two years ago, on Juneteenth, 2021, KBLA Talk 1580 launched with a promise to give disenfranchised fellow citizens a voice in current political, economic, social, and cultural issues with an empowering, sustainable, and restorative language. As we enter our third year, we are delighted that KBLA Talk 1580 consistently emerges as the talk station of choice for African American listeners. In a vigorous public opinion research study, the 2023 African American Media Issue Survey finds that for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 remains the most trusted, credible, and reliable media source in Southern California for African Americans and beyond. Furthermore, 80% of those surveyed agree that outlets like KBLA Talk 1580 provide honest and authentic content about the issues most important to the black community directly from black journalists who understand the issues that need to be addressed. At KBLA Talk 1580, we remain committed to curating conversations that matter to you. Thank you for your continued support. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. The station that sounds like the city looks. The city looks. The Los Angeles Urban League helps African American and others in underserved communities achieve true social parity, economic self-reliance, and civil rights. For over 100 years, Los Angeles Urban League has ensured our communities have access to careers with living wages, opportunities to start and grow businesses, and clear pathways to personal and professional growth. Programs like BizCamp, Construction Career Academy, Ba Business Ready and B Warp. The Black Wealth Attainment and Retention Program are examples of the ongoing events designed to make our centennial mission to rebuild Black Wall Street right here in L.A. a reality. To sign up for our newsletter or to support the Los Angeles Urban League with your time, talents, and donations, visit laul.org. That's laul.org. The Los Angeles Urban League is a proud sponsor of Urban Family Focus, Saturdays at 7 a.m. on KBLA Talk 1580. If you're not following KBLA Talk 1580 on all of our socials, then you're missing out. Download our app and find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on the web at KBLA 1580. That's right. Again, you can find all of our socials at KBLA 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. By the way, if you miss any of our weekday shows in real time, you can always catch up by checking out the podcast of your favorite shows at your leisure. At KBLA Talk 1580, we've got your black. Got your black. Follow the leader. 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 Interrogating your assumptions and expanding your inventory of ideas. Let's get back to Tavis Smiley on KBLA Talk 1580. 80, 80, 80. This is a big and broad question, Ellie Mustard. I'm doing it uh, unapologetically because I know you can uh, give me what I'm looking for here. Um, without going into in, into specifics or particulars, and you can if you wish, I'm not going to. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to get a sense from you of what you make of the decisions that we've been getting from the court in this term. We, again, if we had the time, we'd walk through them one at a time. But broadly speaking, and again, uh, answer it as you wish, of course, but what, what's your read, uh, again, as we wait for the affirmative action decision, wait for the student loan decision, uh, but what's your read on what we've gotten from this court this term? I think the court is a bit scared. I think that post the Dobbs decision, post overturning Roe v. Wade, post the corruption scandals that we've talked about, post their extremist decisions on guns, the court is a little bit like, hmm, people seem to be watching us. Maybe we should hew a little closer to the center mass line. And I think that what we see in the voting rights cases, both the Milligan case, which was about the Voting Rights Act directly, and yesterday's Moore v. Harper, which was about the crazy, kooky, independent state legislature theory, is that what we see is the court trying to kind of draw a more centrist line, mainly for the press, mainly to get people off their scent, mainly to get people off their backside. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has resulted in a few 
kind of democracy affirming decisions, decisions that are good and that we should, you know, take advantage of by like actually going to vote now that we are still allowed to, which was not at all clear was going to happen at the beginning of this month. So I think that's what they're doing, but it it what's underlying it is still this level of conservative extremism that you can still see in many of the cases that they're also deciding that just aren't as kind of high profile hot button do we have a democracy or not kind of way, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a case, for instance, about workers' rights, where the Supreme Court basically destroyed or took a serious uh, hit at the right to strike, kind of important just right now in, say, California, right? Mm -hmm. Like we got... We, we, we're kind of, we should be kind of in a world where we're particularly sensitive about the importance of the right to strike. And the Supreme Court, almost under the radar, just took a huge whack at workers' rights um, to, to strike and cause economic harm to their employers. That didn't get as much press as its voting rights decision, right? And so when you have that unequal press coverage, it kind of looks like, oh, the court is being more moderate. No, they ain't. They're being they're, – they're, they're, they've decided to go against the democracy-defining decisions, I think, to get good press while they're still doing most of their conservative extremism work. And as you say, Tavis, we haven't even gotten to affirmative action. We haven't even gotten to, uh, uh, to the LGBTQ rights case, and we haven't even gotten to student debt relief. So, like, in the next two, three days, um, the narrative the, – even the media narrative could change again – but, you know, look, at the beginning of this month, I honestly didn't know if we were going to be allowed to have a fair election in 2024. Mm -hmm. And I can say today on June 28th, we, pro we can't. We, we, we can still go vote. That, that the Supreme Court will not stop us from voting and from exercising our power at the polls. And so I call that a victory, given what the court could have done. Yeah. But let's not fool ourselves in terms of what this court still is. He has a limited series podcast uh, right now called Contempt of Court with Ellie Mustall. Uh, but he's uh, right now, though, on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come forward, includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. power. Mom's early Alzheimer's diagnosis was hard to take. And when I left the oven on, we decided together that it was time to see a doctor and make a plan. Early detection gave us more time to seek out information and support as a family. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. For more information, visit alz.org slash time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. Tired of being locked out of job opportunities and shut down by systemic racism? KBLA stands with you in fighting for the rights of black workers, and we don't black down. The Los Angeles Black Workers Center is a dynamic alliance of workers, organized labor, community-based organizations, clergy, students, and scholars working collectively to improve the position of the black working class. The LA Black Workers Center takes a comprehensive approach to addressing the black jobs crisis. Their programs promote access to quality jobs, racial equity in hiring and retention, discrimination-free job sites, and they prepare black workers for employment in high-wage, career 
attract jobs. The Black Workers Center supports workers who need help protecting their rights on the job. They give workers access to quality jobs and remove systemic barriers to employment. To sign up for free career readiness training, get involved in organizing around anti-discrimination, learn about union apprenticeship programs, or sign on to a trade registry, please visit www.lablackworkerscenter.org. That's lablackworkerscenter.org. Together, we can beat the black jobs crisis. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Let's unpack a little bit more with Tavis Smiley. The conversation continues right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Eddie Mistal, I was thinking uh, during that break that uh, your suggestion earlier that um, that the Supreme Court may be tacking back to the middle, uh, becoming a bit more centrist because people are paying attention to them. Indeed, we are. But even that decision, uh, as much as I welcome it on certain certain decisions they've uh, given us in this term, even that uh, can only be described as political, though, and the court's not supposed to be political. Oh, absolutely. I think it's entirely political, and I think that they're showing just how political they can be. Yeah. Um, um, and, and, and I think that, again, the, 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 I, here's, the, here's the key to me. Like, just from a, from a my life perspective, one of the things that I have tried to do in my career is get people to focus on the courts. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this term is almost you know, validation that when people focus on the courts, when people are paying attention, the courts act differently. They don't always act right, but they act differently. They don't always behave, but they, you know, they know, when they know you're watching, they, 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 they put out different kinds of decisions. I think that's what we're seeing a little bit this term. Again, in two days, it's all going to go up in smoke because I do think that affirmative action is going down. Um, I do think Roberts is going to write that opinion in some kind of way that is designed, just like I'm saying right now, to have a good headline, right? Affirmative action is banned, but diversity is celebrated. Well, you can celebrate diversity all you want, but if you ban people from knowing um, what the race of, of, of applicants are, then you're not doing anything, John. Yeah. But he's going to write it that way, whereas Clarence Thomas would have written, and also diversity is wrong. Like, yeah. you know, that's – so he's doing it for the headline, and that's what people have to keep focusing on. We need to have media literacy whenever we're reading stories about certainly our entire government, yeah. but especially the Supreme Court. In these 60 seconds I have left here, um, does anything happen uh, about uh, this uh, normalized uh, bribery and legalized corruption um, or does the Senate look the other way? Does nothing happen to reform the court in this regard? Ask Dick Durbin. Ask Diane Feinstein. Ask a senator, because those are the people at this point on the Judiciary Committee that are the first line of defense against this corruption, and they are not getting in the game. And I don't know what it takes to make them. Yeah, that's that's my fear. Um, I'm watching. Well, <laughs> Diane Feinstein is a separate issue, as you well know, uh, yeah. with all due with all due respect. Um, but we could certainly ask Dick Durbin, and um, I'm just disappointed in the answer he's, he's given so far about why they won't get into this when it's so abundantly clear that the Supreme Court is being uh, bought and sold to the highest bidder. But I digress on that, at least for the moment. His name is Elliot Mastall. He's a New York Times bestselling author. I love the book. Allow me to retort a black guy's guide to the Constitution. He is the justice correspondent and columnist for The Nation magazine, and he is hosting now a limited podcast series called Contempt of Court with Ellie Mistal. I'm checking it out, and you should as well. Ellie Mistal, good to hear your voice again, my friend. We'll do it again. Thank you so much, Tavis. Talk to you later this summer. All the best to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hour two of Tavis Smiley after news, traffic, and sports on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Good morning. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Former President Donald Trump claims he did nothing wrong. Trump was responding to an audio recording of a 2021 meeting where he discusses holding.